Welcome once again to Joe Camp. This is the module 4 of our series on sequence stratigraphic principles. In this clip, we'll be looking at stratigraphic sections and their subdivisions into smaller packages based on the different orders of sea level change that has occurred. Now, one thing to note is that the sea level uh, or the global sea level changes occur at different scales. So, depending on the scale at which the sea level has changed, specific nomenclature or specific characteristics are associated with the stratigraphic packages that are linked to each order of the global sea level change. One reason why this is important is that going forward, we'll be having a bunch of um, you know nomenclatures in the subsequent um, um, episodes. So it's important before we delve into the different um, and a higher order um, review of these packages, um, it's important to put everything on one page and kind of figure out how they're all related or how hierarchically how one of them aggregates into the other and vice versa. Right, so rock stratigraphic sections are divided into parasequences, system tracks, and depositional sequences. Now, at the tiniest uh, scale uh, or, or tiniest um, you know um, degree of uh, detail here, we call it the parasequence, and that is followed by the system tracks. And then the last um, sections or episodes of this discussion will focus on the positional um, sequences. Now, the idea of this is, like I mentioned earlier on, to be able to relate uh, one nomenclature to the other, bearing in mind that these are actually at different scales and they're actually uh, associated with a different order of the global sea level change. Now, taking a look at this um, table, it's uh, actually a stratigraphic column. Uh, this is actually referencing a, a lot of authors um, from the past and some more recent um, ideas captured in here. So on the first uh, column, we actually have what we call the eustatic order. That actually captures a different um, order or scale at which the global sea level has changed. So we have five orders first to the fifth order. Uh, the second very important column to note here is the nomenclature associated associated with each um, order. So, for example, at the second order, we actually refer to the packages at that scale as a sequence. Um, however, there are other names depending on uh, what school of thought or author you actually prefer to work with. Um, so, we could some call the second order se super sequence or super cycle. At the third order, uh, it's called a depositional sequence. And then we have the parasequence set at the fourth order, and then fifth order um, will be the parasequence. Now, like I mentioned, uh, there are different variations to some of these names, but what I've done is to highlight in blue um, the nomenclatures I will be using for the sake of this um, discourse. Now, another column that um, I'd like you to point your attention to in this table is the um, fourth column, which is the accurate duration. So now this column focuses on uh, for each other, what is the duration uh, between one episode of sea level change or you static sea level change and the other, right? For example, at the first order, we're looking at over 100 million years uh, or between 200 and 400 million years um, interval. Uh, and then, you know, second order, 10 to 100 million years interval. And then all the way down to the fifth order, we're looking at 0 0.01 to about 0 0.1 a million years interval. So that's just telling us at what frequency um, has the sea level or global sea level changed and how um, is that related to the name of the package and the property of the package. That's the whole idea of this. One other very important thing to note is that um, if you look at the third um, column, we've actually highlighted what we call the probable cost. So for each order, we're looking at what has cost this change. For example, at first order, you're looking at, you know, global sea level changes triggered by the breakup of supercontinents or the making or the formation of supercontinents. Second order, similar, but in this case, uh, changes in, uh, you know, spreading of mid-oceanic ridges and related uh, large-scale tectonic um, activities, Right, and third order similar, and then the fourth order we and fourth and fifth order actually have one thing in common: Milak Milankovic, the glacial eustatic cycles. So these are you know very key um, 
things to note uh, going forward. So in the subsequent slides, we'll look at sequence, we'll look at the original sequence, uh, we'll talk about parasequence sets and the parasequences. So it's important to really keep this whole, you know, your static order in mind. And then also bear in mind that they actually reflect different duration of changes uh, in the, or different frequency of changes in the global sea level. Now I'm just going to walk you through maybe, you know, the, the chart I showed earlier on. So at the level of the stratigraphic sequence, uh, that's at the second order, uh, I did mention that it occurs at, you know, the range of between 10 to 100 million years um, cycle. Now, the next um, higher order, which is called the third order, and that's actually, actually at a much higher frequency of 1 to 10 million years, is the depositional sequence. Um, if you break that down, so one, one each time we, we talked about in the previous um, episode, we talked about the sea level having um, a cycle of rising and falling, right? So each complete cycle of the sea level change uh, is made up of a falling cycle and a rising cycle so one rise plus one fall equals to one uh, sea level cycle and that's actually the same thing as one depositional sequence so each time we see one sea level cycle in your mind just quickly relate that to a depositional sequence uh, and that that means that we're looking at the third order cycle so in this case let's say uh, at the first um, part of this you know sea level cycle let's assume the sea level was falling the Package associated with that is called the low stand system tracts. That's actually the falling sea level. And then we have another episode where at the time the sea level gets to the very um, lowest um, elevation, it begins to rise. And that's like the rising sea level. And that's the transgressive system tracts. We'll talk more on this in details in the, in the next set of episodes um, ahead. And then there's a last uh, phase where the sea level has actually reached a peak um, elevation and it's actually stable and the sediments or the packages uh, associated with that are called the high stand system tracts. Now depending on the arrangement of smaller units within this uh, depositional sequence um, we actually call them uh, parasequence sets. So the parasequence sets are actually a much you know higher order version or component of the depositional sequence. Now, depending on the arrangement, like I said, when the sea level is falling at the phase of sea level drop, we have a set of uh, parasequences which we actually uh, call the prograde to agrade um, set of parasequences. And that's, that's like I mentioned, is actually what makes up the low stand system tract. Um, at the phase where the sea level is rising, we have another set of parasequence sets which we call the retrograde uh, retrograde uh, parasequence sets, and that actually makes up this package which we call the transgressive system track. Uh, and then the other phase of it, that's the phase of uh, stable and rising uh, high and stable sea level, um, we have the agrade, prograde uh, to degrade parasequence sets. Um, now, one thing I want you to note is that. At the level of stratigraphic sequence, we are the second order. At the level of the positional sequence, we are the third order. That's about 1 to 10 million years cycle. Uh, at the level of parasequence sets, we are actually at the fourth order. And that means we actually uh, we have a higher frequency of change. In this case, between 0 0.1 to 1 million years, uh, million years cycle. Now, these are all connected um, to what we call the parasequences. We did talk about parasequence sets, so but at a much um, you know higher detail, each parasequence set is made up of a bunch of parasequences, which either coercing or fine upwards, and which uh, have been actually been said to occur at the fifth um, order of the eustatic cycle, and that's between 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 million year window. Right, so this is uh, what I have for this um, episode. Um, going forward, I'll talk to you more about surfaces uh, and condensed sections in the next uh, clip. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, do let me know if you have questions um, and you can also um, send me an email, send your comments. I do appreciate hearing from you. Thank you very much.